Oh, 
life, Lord. But I
open up my heart to thee and I ask thee to be the grace that reigns in my life. Be the grace that reigns in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this midnight hour. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to do day number seven of 52 days of grace and favor and faith. I thank you, Lord, for the people that are late, even this morning, even tonight, even at this third hour of the night, to keep the watch. I thank you, God, for the anointing available right now to give people access, access into the things that are already waiting for them. I thank you, Lord, for the grace keys that unlocks those that are already in front of their eyes i thank you mighty god that grace is reigning even tonight blessed be your name forevermore thank you lord for tonight thank you for the food you have for us tonight we're gonna eat from your order and we're gonna be strong spiritually and we're gonna develop strong spiritual masses and we'll be able to walk with you all the way we bless your holy name and we thank you our god in jesus mighty name amen and amen and amen praise god hallelujah well it's good morning grace family wherever you're watching us from right there on youtube z shops good to see you there miss Cavender. blessings to you i'm so happy to see you there my god ani nananankamba blessings to you and uh, thank you for the greetings great grace thank you angeline moodley blessings to you and grace to you el lisa great to see you blessings to you our civil system so happy to see you reverend maggie good to see you here blessings to you long time god is good amen k pile after a very long time so excited to see you dear lord reign in my life and let your windows of heaven be opened and let the grace reigns pour in my life it's great to see you, Kapile. Prophetess Divine Grace, I'm so thrilled to see you. What a great woman you are. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Want Matilda Mlonda blessings to you. What a faithful, great woman you are. I release you into your harvest of receiving Aunt Matilda Mlonda. I release you. The Lord says it's your harvest of receiving. Blaba Shika Tabahaya. Zamiwe Tike Harrison again. Congratulations. Is that a great graduation? Congratulations and blessings to you. You too are walking the season of great manifestations. Blessings to you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. And glory to God. Dr. Daniel Shumba, good to see you and blessings to you, sir. I love you so much. And here's my old time friend of mine. He's a minister of the gospel, a general in the kingdom. General Skumbuzam Tilen is an apostle of God's ministry. Uh, it's good to see you joining us tonight. I believe you're going to like this. While I was in TZ, you wanted us to discuss this topic, General Skumbuzo. So don't go away, sir, because this is your night, ever increasing grace. Thank you. My old time friend is watching tonight. I took time to give him a call. I missed you, um, uh, Prophet Elijah Peary. Good to see you, sir. Thank you for watching, and it's good to see you from Woodlands. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, thank you, Jesus. And my good, good, good friend of mine. Now, this friend of mine, me and him, you know, for years now, what we're doing today, what we're doing right now 
in this great studio is something we started many years ago you know started as a small seed with a friend of mine elijah c Meade. he's a pastor uh, right there in pretoria do you remember in my house in your house we try to do all these things but watch how far god has brought us it's good to see you my dear friend there blessings to you praise god hallelujah Felicity uh, in Gabs, they're on YouTube. Good to see you. Praise God. Now, the internet has been uh, misbehaving and behaving at different times. We couldn't bring to you uh, day number seven yesterday, but we thank God we're here. Now, here's what's happening, just to let you appreciate why sometimes we don't come through. So, we're using what is what almost everybody uses. It's unlimited internet we use, but it's called shared internet. That means we're not the only one using internet. Our neighbors are using this same internet. Our neighbors' neighbors are using the same internet. We're tapping from the same tower. So what happens on a day like Friday, on a day like Saturday, or on a day when it's public holiday, when a lot of people are at home and they're feeling cold and their blankets, we have traffic people using the same tower at, at, at the same time and so what happens is um, we have to share the internet and so because of the systems we use we're using three cameras we're using a heavy software we're using computers we're using switches so many things we're using for us to come live so we need strong internet we need faster internet as it goes slow so we can catch up and so the internet the whole day today has been very bad you know because it's friday but we believe people have gone to sleep now so there are very few people and this is why it suddenly i called the studio they said to me dad the internet is good so i had to quickly drive here praise god for vehicles uh uh, I'm so thrilled and excited every time to see you here. And now, so what we need, our next step is to go and get what is called dedicated internet that we don't need to share with. But that means we have to go to our company and they have to come and put fiber uh, here, you know, and then we can have the internet to ourselves. So whatever is happening with our neighbors does not affect us. I hope you understand that I am so determined to finish this 52 days with you. I'm already seeing the grace and the mercy of God manifesting. Well, the last topic was shifting houses, moving houses, moving from the house of the Lord to the house of grace, moving from the house of Moses to the house of Jesus, moving from the house of Saul to the house of David. Tonight, we're looking at the altar of grace grace versus the altar of laws it's gonna be amazing i'm gonna do the introduction and i want to trust god that tomorrow the internet can as well behave because tomorrow i'm going to take you deeper and we begin spiritual warfare now so uh, i began to show you that law and grace can never live in the same house I really, by the grace of God, showed you the scriptures that convinces you right now that you're not under the law, but under grace. I showed you how the law comes to condemn you and the grace comes to justify. And the two can never work together. You're either married to the law or married to grace. You can't carry, you can't marry both of them. I hope that has been very 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 clear and to you and so uh, uh, uh and now i'm beginning uh, to take time to begin to show you how grace is the master weapon in the arsenal of god and jeremiah talks about the fact that god has an arsenal he has an arsenal he has an arsenal and in this arsenal of god there are brooms there are hooks um, there is fire there there's the blood of jesus the word of god the master weapon in the arsenal of god is called the grace of god grace is the strongest weapon in the hands of god it was grace that was released as a weapon on the cross of calvary that destroyed the grip and the hold of satan over our lives praise god and so tonight, I'm going to do an introduction to, to altars, and you're going to 
understand altars in a way you've never understood before. Praise God. So I want to release the spirit of understanding. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we receive from you the spirit of revelation and knowledge in the mystery of altars in Jesus name. Help us God to understand the mystery of altars and help us to take advantage of this grace in Jesus mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. So now remember there's a lion's crawling there. Send your your request send your prayer request and i just want to pray with you it's good to see from the united kingdom my beloved sister and friend she, she used to be my sister i think now she's a good friend of mine she's big family um aninkonde grace is the strongest weapon in the house of the lord so tonight i'll actually show you how grace how the grace of god destroys the altars of the laws and when i talk about the altars of laws versus the altar of grace i'm saying they are spiritual laws and there are physical laws there are social laws that many times limit and restrict god's people from going all the way Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Saul, the first king of Israel, came from an altar of Benjamin. That altar in his house did not allow him to cross the borders and the territories of the Benjamites. You see, the Benjamites and the the and the the the, the Ephraimites, all the tribes of Israel had their jurisdictions of their territories. This is what we call the territory anointing. They had territories they belonged to. So from the tribe of Benjamin belonged to the territory of Benjamin. He came from the altar or from the house where there was an altar that said you can never cross this uh, territory and tonight i want to show you that behavior is influenced by the altar from the house you come from when when saul was on a journey looking for donkeys when he had gone to five places which were within the territory of benjamin and couldn't find the donkeys he said to his servant, let's return home because my father is now worried about us. Now, how did he know that the father was worried about him? The altar in his father's house did not allow him to proceed and cross the borders and the territories. You understand this? Tonight, I want you to understand that there are financial territories. There, there are financial realms. There are social realms and some come from an altar that does not allow them to cross into the millionaire territories. You remain in the thousands and in the hundreds. Some come from the altars that does not allow them to cross into marital territories. Beautiful, blessed, free of the Lord. But there is an altar in the house that says you cannot cross into the territory where people get married. And so, so wanted to return back because he's, 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 he's exhausted the territory of Benjamin. The next territory is beyond, but the altar does not allow. Now, thank God, a prophet came into his territory. And when he went to prophet Samuel, he accessed grace. Yeah, yeah. He accessed grace from the prophetic altar that broke the law that governed Saul's behavior and restricted him from crossing the territory. The very first thing the prophet said was, now that the oil has come upon you, now that this grace has come upon you for the first time, you're going to go to the borders of Benjamin and for the first time you will cross. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this miracle. 
when he came to the borders, there were people telling him. Now they didn't. <laughs> God. There were people telling this man, so go back. The donkeys are found. Your father's worried of thee. Go back to your father's house. There were immigration officers of the territories of Benjamin enforcing the 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 law in in the in the house of Saul where there was an altar that was saying a Benjamite must never cross the borders so there were spiritual immigration officers at all the borders to ensure the altar is respected he cannot cross but but grace was given by the man of god that he was for the first time not going to listen to the voice of retardation and backwards and retrogression but for the first time grace was going to help him break the limitations my god silence the voice of that order and go beyond I pray that as you stay with me in this 52 days, that grace from the throne of grace, grace from the altar of this grace will be released in your life, that for the first time, you will begin to break barriers, limitations, restrictions, and go to places you've always desired to go, but the altar in your father's house was calling you back, that voice shall be silenced. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh yes, my sister. This is powerful. This is powerful. I told you, I can't even now remember whether this is three days, uh, three nights ago, or four nights ago, when literally the Lord began to teach me this. And the Lord in the dream took me to my village. And I found myself in my father's house. And I say to my father, I need to get out of your house. And my father started fighting. He said, you can never leave my house. I say, daddy, no, I got to leave this house. He says, no, 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 no. You, you remain in my house. I said, in the name of Jesus, I'm leaving your house. Now, this is in the dream. I got hold of my younger sister and I said, we're leaving your house. And my father was very angry with me. Now, this is all in the dream. I looked at my father, I said to him, at what age did you leave your father's house? He said to me, 56. And in the dream, I calculated 56 is 5 plus 6, which is 9, which is the truth and also the evil, yin yang, which is a snake in the basket, meaning there is an altar that does not want people to come out of that basket doesn't want them to overcome i say daddy in the dream i said daddy do you know why when a child turns 21 there's a big birthday celebration he says no i said because that's the number of the spirit it's a number of release and so when i say that i said grace take me out of the house i managed to overcome my father and i pulled my younger sister and we came out of that house and suddenly i found myself on a mountain with my younger sister and I saw green fields with harvest and I heard the voice of the Lord saying now you can get the harvest and I realized how serious this is and tonight I'm gonna give you some shocking revelations about your father's house some of you don't even know what your father's house is I'm going to zero in on your father's house because we want to release grace in your father's house to pull you out of your father's house so you can defy and despise and destroy the altar belt there, the altar you don't even know about. This is going to be amazing. And, and, and I'm sorry we couldn't come. This was supposed to be last night. But share the video. Let those that are supposed to be here be here right now. Because I really don't want them to miss this. So very quickly now, I'm going to give you very quick definitions of orders. And I'm going to begin to do part one of this. And tomorrow night we go further. Now, what is an altar? An altar is the number one source of power. Where is the source of power? The source of power is at the altar. An altar is a source of power. The power that controls families. The power that controls behaviors of people. 
The power that controls business, the power that controls direction in a family, in a city, is on the altar. Listen to me carefully. There are house altars, there are personal altars, there are family altars, there are community altars, there are city altars, there are country altars, there are continental altars. Some of the behaviors we ask people to change cannot be changed because the behavior comes from the altar, enters the people. It's a spirit from the altar. As long as there is an evil priest on that altar doing incantations and chantings and predictions and prophesying, people's behavior, people's progression is going to be influenced by that order. But thank God there is a new altar. It's called the altar of grace. I will show you it in the scripture. It's stronger than this altar. But you need to reinforce it, confirm it, affirm it, and release this grace into your house to destroy that altar that is present in your father's house. And then let the grace of the, the altar of grace be raised in your father's house. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Secondly, an altar is a place of divine exchange. An altar is a place of divine exchange. An altar is a place where an exchange happens. An altar is a spiritual marketplace. Woo! An altar is where humans take their physical offerings to access something more powerful than the material that controls the material. Oh, glory to God. Yes, Father, let your altar be raised in my home. An altar is a place where people... Take maize, take animals, take human sacrifices, take offerings. Oh, and once they put there, a spirit is released on that altar, whether it's a spirit of influence, whether it's a spirit of barrenness, whether it's a spirit of poverty, whether it's a spirit of retrogression, whether it's a spirit of confusion. It is released and it controls the people. And unless a Christian believer has an altar, because the battle is never altar versus you. The battle is altar versus altar. A friend of mine, four or five days, as I began to share with her, about orders, she began to say to me, did you know there was a calabash as an altar under the bed of her parents? And every and they had put the names of all the children in that calabash and there was beer poured in it. And every time they'll shake the calabash. That friend of mine, uh, three of them are pastors. Three of them are pastors. Their marriages will begin to quake. Their marriages will begin to shake. There'll be confusion. <laughs> Four, five days, she was testifying this. She says, but, but when they began to pray and to pray, the spirits begin to confess. Demons as well screaming, they begin to confess. We can't go, why? Because there is a place that is holding us. What's the place? And the demons revealed. Oh, hallelujah. Light and truth will cause demons to reveal. In your father's house, under the bed. And one of the sons to the father said, yes, it's there. It is there. And they went, and when they broke the manifestation that happens there, and, and people can be released. Help you understand. An altar is a place of worship. 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 An altar is a place where you meet the priest.
Now, a lot of people said, because of what's happening in the churches today, they can never give the tithe. They would rather take the tithe to an orphanage. And I asked, is there an altar at the orphanage? Because tithe is a holy seed that comes in the hands of a priest. And tonight I'm going to say this without fear or favor. Tithe is different from an offering. Tithe comes in the hands of Melchizedek. It comes in the hands of a priest. It does not even go to the church. It goes to the priest. Tithe belongs to the altar. An altar is an opening between rains. An altar is an opening between rains. Where you see an altar, that is a door into the realm of the spirit and into the physical. It's a launch pad. It's where spirits enter from hell into the natural. Yeah, yeah. And it is a place where human beings are sent into the spiritual. Have you ever noticed you visit certain houses? your dreams change. You go to another house, you have demonic dreams. You go to another house, you've got holy dreams. What's going on? Because you entered an altar, which is an opening. It's a gate. Oh! It's a gate to hell. So you begin to connect with hell. Tonight is going to be good. This is the reason some of you, when you're growing up like me, our parents never, ever allowed us to visit houses anyhow, neither sleeping in those houses nor eating in those houses because they understood the principle of the altar. Today, Satanism has gone on rampage. Our children, sometimes they don't behave the way they should because of these exchange programs. Daddy, can I go visit my friends? Mommy, can I go visit friends? You do not know the house they are going. Maybe that house is a door. Proverbs will tell you, my son, do not go to the house of a prostitute because a woman is an altar. It's an altar wh whose door leads right to hell. Jacob was tired, listen to this, as he was running away from the brother. He was tired. He never had time to repent. He never had time to say, Lord, I lied that I was Esau when I'm Jacob. The man was tired, never had time to repent, never had time to fast. So he was running, he got tired. He found a stone, it's an altar, and he put his head on the stone. Suddenly, the heavens opened. No prayer, no praise, no repentance, no fasting. You see, an altar altar is stronger than your prayer life. An altar, if you connect with an altar, even if you've been fasting, if you've never raised an altar, you connect to hell. Oh, if you're a, a witch and you come into the house where there's an altar of God, Jesus will show up to you because an altar is more powerful than prayer. And never forget this. Mauta is a pastor today. Mauta Piri is a pastor today. And you know, he, when he was young and he was struggling with his walk with the Lord, and, and, and he, this is his testimony. Every time he visited me, you know, to ask tricky questions about Jesus, in the night, angels appeared to him. And this is what led him to Jesus and to love me. He says, you know, in this house, there are angels, because your house is an altar. You know it or you don't. Your house is an altar, but what spirit is governing in that house? Praise God. Hallelujah. So an altar is a door, is, is a portal, is a portal. Now, few examples of altars. Few examples of altar. Number one, names. Names. Every name, especially a surname. Or a name given to you by a priest, whether a priest from the kingdom of light or a priest from the kingdom of darkness, or a name inherited. Definitely an altar. A few examples of altars. A name. One example of a name, a surname. Second example of a name, inherited name. Third example of a name, 
and name of the one you worship. Names like Daniel. That's why Nebuchadnezzar couldn't use that name. He had to change the name to Belshazzar because Bel, Bel is a god. And Nebuchadnezzar knew that he could not listen to Ah, shut up, tata, listen, listen. Nebuchadnezzar knew that he could not perform his evil craft in the presence of Daniel if he called him Daniel because Daniel is a name that carries an altar with the spirit God is my judge so the demonic spirits of Babylon could not function in the house of Daniel or if that name is pronounced Oh, Nebuchadnezzar was demonically intelligent. He knew he needed to change that name because that name was affecting his evil craft. I hope you understand this. I hope you understand this. So a name inherited. This is why you see most Muslims, they have names, Muhammad, you know, four names, five names. Dereko shata rabba loboko sita tatalaya. What is an altar? An altar is a spiritual surveillance system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to show you. It's another scripture. An altar is a spiritual surveillance system. Where there is an altar, you do not need FBI, CIA to watch over you and altar will watch over you and if you make a mistake it will deal with you on its own it's all in the scripture i'll show you this is why when you connect to the altar of grace yeah yeah some beautiful things begin to happen before you even pray while you are still thinking this is what god said while you still be thinking of what to say in your prayer while your words will still be on your lips before you tell me your needs i will go ahead and answer your prayer why because the altar of grace will be speaking to god on your behalf once you connect to it before you even pray <sighs> So a few examples of altars, names, surname, given names, inherited names, spiritual names. That's why they change names. Examples of altars, houses, temples, priests. Sanctified places, you like this one. First bones. First bones are definitely altars. <laughs> Every time we do warfare, whether it's me doing it, whether it's my cousins doing it, <laughs> my father appears in their dream because my father is the first born of my grandfather. Definitely an altar. So, scripture says, whatever opens the matrix, the womb, belongs to God. Whether it knows it or not. And when that person is the firstborn and refuses to be aligned to God, they open themselves to demonic interference and to be used by Satan because in the realm of the spirit, they are potential priests. And so Satan can use, easily use them because they are qualified to stand as priests. Hope you understand this. And this is a reason God only killed the firstborn of everything in Egypt. The firstborn of humans, the firstborn of cattle, sheep, God, camels. Why? Because God was dealing with the priest who is a potential altar that was restricting Israel from leaving. Mm. Did you hear that? So God knew that the power of Egypt that restricted, that stopped Israel from going was from the altar and the altar was the firstborn. The priests were firstborns. Can't you see these? 
So God had to destroy the power of Egypt. How? He killed the firstborn. Why the firstborn? Because firstborns are priests and they are mobile, walking, living altars. That was the very power of Egypt. <laughs> Is everybody here? Are you able to hear what I'm articulating tonight? Now, let's begin, oh, time is moving. Let's begin to, to show you a few things that Jesus talked about. Now, Bokang is not here. Didi is not here. Mr. Kadesh is not here. Who shall read for me tonight? Matthew 10, verse 36. I want you to hear the words of Jesus. Matthew 10. Oh, thank you, Aunt Matilda, you're hearing. Matthew 10, verse 36. We're going to give you an introduction to this thing. You're going to like it. Matthew 10, verse 36. And a man's enemy. Oh, God. This is, these are the words of Jesus. And a man's enemy enemies will be those of his own household underline household thank you lord jesus thank you yes felicity you can give us that jesus said your enemies shall be those from your household The enemy without is strengthened by the enemy within. The enemy outside is made strong by the enemy inside. When you deal with the enemy inside, the enemy in the house, the enemy outside loses power i'm going to give you scripture for that when a demon leaves a person it goes through dry places looking for a place to be but it defines no place it says to itself let me go back and check the house i came from and once it finds that the house is clean without the word of God, without the Holy Ghost, it says, I can go back in the house. It's vacant, but it's intelligent. So it goes and brings seven more wicked spirits to come and inhabit this person so that there are eight demonic spirits in this person. And the scripture says, the last state of this person becomes worse. So here's the thing. The demon that invited the seven is called the host demon. The seven demons are called the ghast demons. Now, if you try to rebuke the ghast to leave, as long as the host is still there, the ghasts are not going anywhere. Because the host demon says, these are my visitors. These are my ghasts. You got no right to chase them. So what you got to do is to deal with the hosting demon. And once the hosting demon leaves, the ghasts have got no legal ground to be there. Jesus is saying, I know you are scared of the enemy outside. I know you are scared of the accusation and the challenges and the problems that come from outside. But have you taken time to look at the enemy in your house? Abraham, leave your father's house. Even I, God, I want to bless you. But as long as you're in your father's house, there is an altar in there that will stop the flow of the blessing. Abraham, leave your father's house. My God. My God. Amplified. Thank you, Felicity. And a man's enemies will be members of his own household. Jesus. Are you here? Are you here, beloved? Now, 
What did scripture mean when he said, what did Jesus mean when he says your enemies are those in your house? What did he mean? He was saying in your house there is an altar. Oh, glory to God. In your house there is an altar. Now, a lot of you are looking for a physical altar, but before I come to the physical altar in your house, I want to come to the spiritual altar in your house, which you carry every day wherever you go. Because we need to direct grace where to go. So let's look at the spiritual altar in the houses we come from. Proverbs 18 Verse number 10. Proverbs 18. Verse number 10. I want to do justice to the scripture. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> Proverbs 18. Verse number 10. Do you... <laughs> Do you know why, growing up, every time we had visitors, the first thing our parents did was to chase that chicken and kill it? Did you experience that, Alfred? Felix? Kennedy? Do you know why? They were reinforcing the altar in the house. Oh, God. Every time they're visitors, you know the chicken will die. It was a shedding of blood to receive visitors in the house so that if they came with their altar, the altar in the house have just shed blood. The altar in the house is strengthened. Yeah, yeah. Oh God. Oh God. Did you know why every Bible character? In the Bible, every time they received visitors, <coughs> whether those visitors were angels or they were just human beings, they killed a sheep or a goat. Come on, it's not just in our culture. It's in the Bible. Do you know why they did that? They were strengthening their altar. Yeah, yeah. Because they knew that a visitor was carrying a strange altar from the altar in the house. Otherwise, there will be battles of altars. But as the visitor ate from this house, his altar was swallowed by this house. Mm. Oh my God. Thank you. Didi's here. Praise God for you, Didi. Didi's here. Thank you. Wow, powerful truth. Thank you, Didi. You know how much I longed for you. So, here it is now. Proverbs 18 verse 10. Now, carefully follow me in Proverbs 18 verse 10. Carefully, please. I'm reading. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. Now, Dr. Schumber, Didi, Annie, all of you grace to live overseas, you've seen towers. Give us a definition of a tower, please. And my band, you get this? Powerful, powerful teachings indeed. Glory to God. El Sibusiso, what? What is a tower? We used to sing this, this song. I don't know whether Alfred, you know it. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it. They are saved. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it. They are say, blessed, blessed, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. So Felicity, help us. What is a strong tower? Talk to me. What's a strong tower? <laughs> What's a strong tower? 
Am I banda? What is a strong tower? Sister Annie, talk to me. Write something. Because I want to give you a revelation tonight. I want, I want you to go sleep thinking about this revelation. What is a, a tower? The scripture tells us the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into this tower and their self. Dr. Shumba, where are you, sir? What is a tower? Talk to me. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, anointed Annie. There we go. Oh, Rebecca Livingston, blessings to you. A tower is a high building. A tower is a high building. Correct answer. A tower is a high building. Okay. So watch this now. Watch this. The name of the Lord is a building. Yeah. The name of the Lord is a high building and people can run in this building and when they run into this building, into this house, into this tower, they find something there. It's called safety. It's called safety. So here's what I want you to, 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 to do here. A name is a house. I want you to understand this. I've got eight minutes. A name is a house. A name is a strong tower. A name is a building. Every building has something inside. Oh God. The, 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 the name Lord is a high building and inside this building of the Lord, there are things inside there. There are angels inside that building. There's healing inside that building. There's deliverance inside that building. There is restoration inside that building. Now watch this, please. Watch this, watch this. Your name is also a building. Your name is a house. Your surname, your spiritual name, your given name, your inherited name is a building. Yeah, 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 and if your name is a building, the question tonight before we go in tomorrow to find this altar, if your name is a building, then in that building, that name is an altar that serves the building. The question is, what spirit is in your name? What things are in your name? When people come into your house called your name, what do they meet? You who live inside, see, you live inside your name. You live inside your name. What things are in that name? Oh, I wanted you to get this. I want you to get this. In the house of Abraham, in the name Abraham, the, in that house, in that name, there was an altar. There was an altar in the house of Abraham. <laughs> in the house of terror. Shashata table. In the house of terror. In the name terror. Yeah, yeah, ta, 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 ta. In that, in that house, Terra, Abram, Terra, the, the, the house God called Abram from. In that name, Terra, there were idols, there were lies, there were barrenness. As long well as you came in that house, oh, Jatebo Rikesi, ta 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 ta. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. 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 So in the spirit, when we have to do a diagnosis of your name, what will we find inside your name? Whatever we find inside that name is serviced by the altar. So listen to me. Your name is an altar.
Your name is an altar. Jacob was left alone. And he cried to God. All night long wrestled with an angel of the Lord. Bless me, he cried. Bless me, he cried. There are a lot of you tonight that are crying like Jacob. Bless me in my marriage. Bless me in my career. Bless me in my health. Bless me, Lord. And the angel said, surely I am here for this purpose to bless you. But what is your name? Are you sure the angel didn't know that Jacob knew he was Jacob? He was not really asking for the name. He was saying, the altar that carries the name Jacob does not receive the blessing from the altar of grace. Jacob, you want to be blessed? Tonight we've got to remove an altar from your life. The altar that makes you to lie, Jacob. Yeah, 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 yeah. The altar that makes you to do it your own way, Jacob. The altar that makes you to be a swindler, a fast guy. Yeah, yeah. The altar that makes you to bribe, thinking by bribing your big brother, you'll get your protection, Jacob. This behavior of yours, Jacob, is from this altar called Jacob. Jacob. Unless this name is removed, grace cannot enter your life, Jacob. From this day, you shall be called Israel. Israel means a prince. A prince is an altar that says, born to receive the Father's kingdom. <laughs> Can you see the name prince means grace. A prince, when you're called prince, it means you are designated, designed, and wired to receive your father's kingdom. And you receive your father's kingdom by grace. That night, the altar of the law called Jacob. Do you know what was the story of Jacob? He had to fight for everything. Jacob was blessed in the womb. For there was a prophecy given to the mother. The older brother shall serve the younger. The younger shall be great. The younger shall be powerful. The younger shall be influenced. But the parents made a mistake when they called him Jacob. They raised an altar that contravened, contradicted, counteracted the prophecy Jacob was born with. When they gave him the name Jacob, they raised an altar that canceled that. So he had to fight for everything. He had to fight to the blessing the father was about to give Esau was his by prophecy. Ah, ah, ah. Uh, God spoke to the mother, this your, your younger son shall be the one that carries the blessing. But the father was giving it to another. Jacob had to fight for everything. If you ask Jacob for his testimony before the change of the name, he will tell you, I had to fight for everything. I had to fight for everything given to me by prophecy. I had to lie sometimes. Times just to get the blessing. Ah, I, 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 I have to fight to get my Rachel. My goodness, I have to be deceived. I had to fight. I was cheated of my wages ten times. I had to fight for everything. Nothing comes easy. That's what Jacob will tell you. Why, Jacob? Because Jacob is a name which is an altar that makes this guy fight for everything until that altar is removed and prince which means grace is released in his life then he can receive the father's kingdom <sighs> hmm. after he became israel he fought for nothing he just began to receive the grace of God wants to release you from fighting for everything. 
Jesus conquered on the, co on the cross so you can be a more than a conqueror. You are on the receiving side. But the only thing that makes you fight for what is yours is when the altar of grace is still being fought by the altar in your house. <sighs> Glory to God. You know why you should praise him? Because an altar of grace is here to relieve you, release you from sweating. So tomorrow, I begin to take you into this altar things. You're going to understand altars, deal with them at a grace level you've never heard this before it's gonna bless you it's gonna give you freedom you're gonna feel light you'll stop getting worried you will you will you will have a childlike faith. you'll come to a place where you know that you know you can never be denied you're gonna replace the altar of your name the altar in your father's house with the altar of grace come unto me all you that labor and are heavy laden and I'll give you rest there is rest for you there is rest for you he says take my yoke for it is easy and it is light you know sometimes we have a wrong mentality because we have made people who've not taken quality time to study the word of God. So they'll tell you, it's not easy. It's not easy. It is not easy, my brother. It's not easy being a child of God. It's not easy being a Christian. Do you think Prince Harry, Prince William say that? Do you think they say such things? Do you think Prince Charles has ever opened the mouth and say, it's not easy to be a prince? You've got to struggle for everything. You think Prince Charles has ever said that? Come on, learn from the natural. Royalty is graced. Oh, God. Prince Charles has to fast a thousand days for him to know how to walk in poverty. Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28. Jesus gives an invitation. He knew people were carrying heavy ladens because of the altars of law. He says, all you that are carrying heavy loads, heavy burdens, he says, come to me. Come to me. I want to give you rest. Oh, thank you, Father. And I want to give you my yoke to carry. It's not the yoke of the law. It's a yoke of grace. He says, for my yoke is easy and is light. Did he give us the last scripture and we pray? Matthew 11, verse 28, 29 and 30. Let's read this. Let's read this. Oh, glory to God. I declare the altar of grace in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, I agree with you. I agree with you. I agree with you. Glory to God. I agree with you. Thank you, Jesus. I agree with you. Glory to God. I'm in agreement with that prayer. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Didi, Matthew 11, verse 28 to 30, 28, 29, and 30. Every one of you listen to the scripture because you'll meet bishops, prophets, apostles, pastors. 
you'll meet elders and deacons and Christians who will tell you, it's not easy, my brother, being a Christian. But this is what they say. I want you to go by what Jesus says. I want you to go by what grace says. I want you to go by what grace says. A lot of religious people tell you this thing. It's not easy. It's tough. But I want you to begin to change your mouth. Because your mouth can be erecting an altar of law. Hallelujah. It was not easy in the times of Moses. But I want you to see what the scripture is. There we go. Thank you, Didi. Thank you, Didi. Thank you. There we go. Matthew eleven twenty eight to 30. Come unto me, all you that labor, and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn, and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. For I've prepared a resting place for you. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we worship you. If you have to do and apply much effort, it's not of God. How do you know this is of God? It's effortlessly. Every time you have to fight for something, grace is not at work. Grace is not at work. Whatever you fight for and you get it because of fighting, you're going to lose it. If it is of grace, it is easy and it is, a, it is light. That's one of the signs, you know. That grace is at work. I want to release into your resting place right now. I want to release... A resting season for you. A sweatless anointing. It's the grace of God. It's the grace of God. It's the grace of God. Let's pray. My Father and my God, full of grace and truth, hallowed be thy name. How beautiful and how wonderful is your grace. Tonight by the Spirit of the living God I pray. That you who reveal hidden things. You will reveal what is inside the names your people were given. By their parents, their grandparents, their guardians. That Holy Spirit you will visit every one of them. And begin to give them a revelation of their names, their surnames, their given names, their inherited names. And show them if peradventure they are carrying a name which is an altar that counsels the blessings of God in their lives. I pray for a spirit of revelation in their names. And I pray God that your special Good hand of God. We will begin to snatch them. Out of their father's house. Into the house of grace. And I pray that God will experience Matthew 11, 28 and 29 and 30. That God you begin by your grace to relieve them. Of every financial burden. Marital burden. Relieve them, O Yahweh, of every health burden, every religious burden. Whatever it is that is weighing them down, 
grace kick in right now and release them from the thing that weighs them down emotionally, physically, mentally, socially, God, I pray. Whatever is weighing you down in your calling, in your career, it is not of God. Right now, I release the grace of God to arrest it and remove it from your life in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not need to fight for that thing, for grace is bringing it into your vicinity and faith will pick it up. Oh, thank you, Lord. I pray that grace will deliver your mouth, that you begin to confess the blessings of Calvary. You begin to say from today, it is easy because it's no longer by my mighty, nor by my power, nor strength, but by the spirit of grace. Now that money is easy, that marriage is easy, that health is easy. Glory to God. Grace gives you a marital breakthrough, a territorial breakthrough, a corporate breakthrough, a social breakthrough, a prayer breakthrough. Oh, glory to God. Receive it, beloved. Take it. It is yours. There is a sweet, sweet anointing upon you. Can you feel it? Jesus has given you truth. Now be ye liberated. Be ye free. Free, free from addictions, wine addiction, alcohol addiction, masturbation addiction. Be free right now. Truth is come. Truth is making you free right now. Right now. Yes, receive it in the name of Jesus. Let it worry over your child. Be ye free from it. Let grace bring the child into your hands right now. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name forevermore. Graced you've made us to become. Glory to your holy name. Thank you, Father. In the beautiful name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen and amen. Quickly, let's take communion. Hallelujah. Jehovah. Jire, the Lord my provider, you keep on doing great things. Jehovah, Jire, the Lord my provider, yeah, you keep on doing great things. Jehovah, Rohi, the Lord my shepherd, you keep on doing great things. Jehovah, Rohi, the Lord my shepherd, you keep on doing great things. Tonight, just when you are done, drinking from the cup of grace and eating of his body I would like you to open your palms and your hands and take a minute to receive by grace in the natural the promises of God I told you an altar is a door between rams right now ten your bed into the altar of grace. As a matter of fact, I'm trusting God to give you a financial breakthrough. I want you to go shopping. Go buy some beautiful white beddings, white bed sheets. Pray over them. Anoint your bed. Turn it into the grace altar. And every time you sleep on it, let the heavens be opened over you to give you direction. Mm -hmm. So tonight, speak the word of his grace on your bed, if you're watching me from bed. 
When we're done taking communion, open your hands. Receive that promotion by His grace. Receive that healing by His grace. Receive that rest oration by His grace. Receive the revelation. Receive the divine direction you need by the grace. Receive the voice of God by His grace. This is a cup of grace. Yes, Deborah, goodness, my bed is an altar of grace. Oh, yes, Minister JC, thank you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we drink from your cup of grace. We eat from your altar of grace. We eat of this bread that strengthens us spiritually. Lord, we decree and declare long life, divine health, supernatural speed we discern your body we discern your blood oh we discern our house as a temple and we speak in our house this body we erect and we build and we raise by faith right now an altar of grace indeed we are sons and daughters of your glory Lord, as your people drink from the cup of grace and eat from the table of your grace, as they begin to mention things they're receiving, God, confirm this message that you're a good God doing great things and wonders to your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, take it. I am eating from the odor of grace. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Come on, receive from the Lord. Zamira, receive. Shabs, receive. Felicity, receive. Annie, receive. Dr. Shimba, receive. My sister and Conde, receive. Receive every one of you. Receive in the mighty name of Jesus. He keeps on doing. Rebecca Livingston, receive glory to God. Mention it and let grace apply it. By faith, receive from the grace of God all that you've desired. Thank you, God. We give you praise. In the name of Jesus. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. It's easy. It's light. That's your confession. That's how you're going to walk. Praise God. Grace has made that which was difficult easy for you. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> Thank you, Lord. I love you, family. Some of you are attending service this morning, so I've got to, to release you early. Deborah, goodness, you're doing the marketplace for our Sunday service, and Pastor Frank is ministering. Share the video. People didn't know we'll be here, but always follow Follow Grace TV so that you receive the notification when we are on. We trust in God for more grace for us to shift from shared internet to dedicated internet so that all these internet fluctuations can be of the past. Oh, thank you, my abandon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Didi. Thank you. So Sunday night, I want to come and take you deeper while this is still fresh in covenants and show you how grace is an altar and show you these beautiful things in the word of God. I love you, over to you Alfred, over to you Mr. K, blessings to you.
keeps holding.